So we're going to pivot a little bit with our next talk um, from Sergey, who's going to talk to us a little bit about um, how we might uh, describe the anatomy, perhaps so that it becomes more graph-like and plugs into that kind of graph of molecular data that we have. Um, so Sergey, take it away. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much, Deborah and Matt, for inviting me to give this talk at, talk at this session. So, and I will be talking about Phenoscript. It's a language for semantic species description that we are currently developing in my lab. And first of all, so, oh, first of all, actually, I would like to acknowledge the folks from my lab who are actively contributing to Phenoscript right now and who have contributed to this talk in particular. So phenotypic data are growing rapidly. We have more than 1 million of species described right now. And these species are described by means of various publications and monographs. So it's a big wealth of phenotypic data. However, species descriptions come in natural language and natural language is not really understandable by the computers, which makes the description the species description is not really reusable by uh, following studies. So an ontologist can be a solution to solve this problem. So what is ontology? Ontology, it's uh, a term from computer science uh, in the in present context. And basically ontology, it's a technology for modeling knowledge and for modeling data about knowledge and for representing this data. And there are already a lot of ontologies developed and a lot of methods developed to work with ontologies. So we have many anatomy ontologies. And if you're interested, you can go to Obo Foundry and check which ontologies are presently available. Uh, we also have a wealth of methods uh, to work with semantic phenotypes, with phenotypes represented using ontologies. And I would like uh, to speak to specifically emphasize Phenoscape project. So Phenoscape project was a collaborative effort to create, to create comprehensive databases and methods to work with semantic phenotypes. And we already have pro uh, Phenoscape developed protocols that can be used to annotate or to code different characters, different traits using ontologies. And they all also created a software called Phenex for annotating character matrices using ontologies. However, species descriptions, they are uh, much more flexible in compared to character matrices. So they are not that constrained as uh, character statements and character matrices. And uh, we do not have so oh we didn't have software or, or or some method that could deal with species descriptions. Uh, to fill out this gap uh, in our lab, where we are develop developing currently Phenoscript, a language that can be used to describe species. And I would like to give you some example. So here you can see on the left hand side a natural language description that states. A male of Helictopleurus sicardi, this is a dung beetle species from Madagascar, has black protibia and convex pronotum. And on the right, on the right hand side, you can see the same traits of uh, the male holotype described using Phenoscript. So both descriptions actually are quite similar. If you remove, uh, well, certain uh, certain parts here in Phenoscript description like namespaces, ISM, Pato, in these uh, strange signs that I used. So all, all these parts, they're necessary to follow specific grammar uh, to basically make your description semantic, right? So because there are rules, but I'm not going to, to go into details about this grammar due to the lack of time. But basically how you can think of semantic species descriptions and that made using Phenoscript in particular. So it's convenient to think of them as of knowledge graphs. Here on the bottom, you can see a, a, a knowledge graph for specifically this Phenoscript description. So, and basically notes in these graphs are some anatomical entities or their qualities and relationships are some relationship that exists between entities. Uh, all these terms, they come from pre-selected uh, biological ontologies.
Uh, so why using FenoScript? Given that there are some other languages or formats uh, to create knowledge graphs using ontologies, like, for example, Total or Oval format. Well, because FenoScript is just compact, it's specifically designed uh, for describing species and phenotypes. As an example, so what takes just three lines of, of FenoScript would take more than 200 lines uh, using conventional formats like total and oval. And the FenoScript is, is uh, very flexible. You can describe everything literally uh, using FenoScript if you have uh, necessary and appropriate ontologies. This is, uh, so this is the FenoScript description that states, thanks for watching this talk. Uh, so yeah, the only, the only limitation in using FenoScript is the lack of ontologies if they are not yet developed for the focal taxon. And to help write in FenoScript, we developed two softwares called um, FenoScript VS Code um, extension or plugin and FenoSpy Python package. Uh, all of these softwares, they are open source and freely available through various repositories like GitHub, Visual Studio Marketplace, and PyP repository for Python packages. So, and I will show you how normal uh, workflow looks like for describing species using FenoScript. So this is uh, VS Code Studio. VS Code Studio is just an advanced text editor for programmers. It's free, everyone can install it and everyone can install FenoScript uh, plugin right from the VS Code Studio marketplace. And this FenoScript plugin provides syntax highlight to help visualize your description and distinguish between nodes and edges in your knowledge graph. And also it provides uh, functionality for snippets. So it's basically these um, terms from pre-selected biological ontologies that immediately pop up uh, as soon as you type few letters of um, of your anatomical or some quality words and help you to select the group of terms for your descriptions. Uh, and as soon as you have your description of species written using FenoScript, then the uh, following procedures can be taken. For example, you can use FenoSpy package and convert your description to OWL format. OWL is a standard format to work with ontologies. So basically uh, everything is stored into OWL. Uh, when it comes to ontology, but OWL is XML-like format. It's totally non-readable by humans, uh, but readable by computers. And as soon as you have your OWL file that describes your species, you can upload this OWL file to Fina repo. This is a GitHub repository, uh, which is in the very premature state right now under development. So the idea of this Fina repo is to have a repository for traits, for species, for phenotypes that work similar to GeneBank, but for phenotypic data. And uh, uh, another application uh, that, that is possible with our file is to use FenoSpy package and compare your species and phenotypes automatically. Some methods are already developed for that, but a lot of methods should yet be developed. So this package is still is uh, currently under development with uh, some available functionality already. And the other application uh, that one can produce is to convert FenoScript description into natural language description. Uh, and these natural language descriptions comes into in Markdown HTML format. So here you can see this annotated or generated natural language descriptions from FenoScript of a Grayanoides wasp. Uh, so uh, all terms, all anatomical terms in this description are hyperlinked. So if you click on a particular term, then your browser will take you to ontology lookup service and you can see uh, the relationships of this term in ontology and its definitions. Uh, and currently we are collaborating with Pansoft to publish 
uh, annotated nature language description in biodiversity data journal. Basically, the idea of this collaboration is that you don't write any, any longer nature language descriptions in, in traditional format. You write them in PhenoScript and publish after generated um, nature language descriptions in, uh, in biodiversity data journal. Uh, also, this uh, PhenoScript integrates very well with Overleaf. I don't know how many people are using Overleaf for writing papers, but in our lab, we, uh, we, we use it extensively. It's very convenient tools to produce some collaborative pieces of work. And basically, if you integrate Overleaf, um, your Overleaf project with GitHub repository, then you can write PhenoScript description and then literally click a button and this PhenoScript description will come out or will be rendered by Overleaf um, as a PDF. And there is no need to copy paste your rendered description from some uh, uh, markdown that was generated on your desktop computer and then copy paste it into your browser. So it can be done automatically through GitHub integration. And the only thing that you need to do is to provide a name of a uh, of file from your GitHub repository in your Overleaf project, like, like here, with some, um, with some LaTeX grammar. So it's very simple. And also, actually, you can use uh, generated or annotated natural language descriptions in Texan works. Uh, so these descriptions, they come in markdown format, and there is a content editor feature in Texan works. You can just copy past this markdown document um, here. The, the, you can see this here on the left-hand side, and then it will be rendered uh, as a hyperlink text in, in your RTU browser, which, which again, you can click and uh, find out the definitions of different terms and, and browse your description. And also the future, the future of species pages. So Matt and Deborah asked me to to dream about this, how I see the future of species pages. And um, actually, I would just expand of what Matt told previously during his introductory to talk, that it would be great to, mo uh, to move toward one big knowledge graph, right, that unites species descriptions with, bi with other biodiversity data. And I asked the mid-journey board to generate some potential uh, layouts for how interface may look like for future species descriptions. And here you can see some uh, examples of that. And actually, uh, they match exactly what I was dreaming about them. So may maybe actually in a few years, we will see this in text and work implemented. So species descriptions should be something like species dashboards with, uh, with data for data expl exploration, in my opinion. They should be something like entry points to biodiversity knowledge graph uh, and other biodiversity data. And they should be enriched with hyperlinks. Uh, so, and how I see them is basically they are the main hubs for data exploration and extraction of data for downstream analysis on your desktop computer. Uh, because we methods are constantly being developed and it's hard to put everything in one place uh, uh, and that these, uh, these, uh, these methods will serve forever, right? So we, uh, we always implement uh, or include new methods in our workflows. And that's why I think having powerful exploration tools that allow you to scrap data you need for your analysis uh, this is what we need as a, in, in our future dashboards or, or species pages. And of course, it would be great to see them integrated, these dashboards with other ecosystem like GitHub, Zenodo, maybe Obsidian to streamline data editing and, and access to data. So that's it. I would like to acknowledge folks in my lab, external collaborators and, and funding agencies. Uh, you can see their logos on the bottom for making this research possible. And I would be more than happy to answer your questions. Thanks, Sergey. Uh, really nice and visionary there. Um, you have a couple questions in the Q&A. Thanks, Peter. Um, can you use PhenoScript, 
or some other tool to parse and text mine existing descriptions? Um, if yes, how well does that work? Uh, maybe using one of your projects in progress and a follow-up. Um, we have experimented with ChatGPT, which can do things like this, but there's clearly rooms for in, for improvements. And I know, Sergey, we talked about the Trade Fast meeting that did a lot of work on looking at uh, ChatGPT as a phenotype parser. Maybe you can say a little bit on both those fronts. Is pheno, PhenoScript doesn't parse from my knowledge, and then your experience in ChatGPT. Yes, right. So PhenoScript doesn't parse. Uh, uh, basically, uh, PhenoScript can be used for annotating or de novo description of phenotypes. Uh, par uh, parsing is a different task. So if using ChatGPT to parse existing description into PhenoScript, then this is problematic. So, and ChatGPT doesn't really work well with ontologies. So, it uh, fakes uh, basically it 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 hallucinates so and fakes um, data and ontology terms, uh, which uh, uh, complicate. I mean, which complicates all the process a lot. I was playing a little bit with ChatGPT and PhenoScript, but uh, the results were not uh, satisfactory. I would say maybe, of course, training a new language model that takes into account ontologies, so may help. So yeah, but at the moment, there is no such solution. Uh, Matt, may I briefly interrupt? So there was a poll. Can we share the results really quick so everybody can see them? Yes? Uh, let's see. Uh, I can do it. I'll just yeah, sorry. I had I had shared them for a couple minutes, and then I oh, just, you did. Um, okay. Yeah, there's our Stop. poll. It looks like around yeah. uh, one fifth. Am I getting that right? Of you have used uh, VS Code. Um, Sergey's classification of it as as a sort of just think of it as a text editor uh, is is really the starting point. Don't get overwhelmed with it. And it really is a wonderful tool. Okay. Stop sharing. But I mean, twenty percent of people using VS Code, right? So it's, yeah. it's good. Yeah, that's good. And, but yeah. I, I think um, maybe people maybe people don't know about VS Code and use some other text editors. And mm -hmm. VS Code is easy to install, free software, easy to use because it's just an ex a text editor, which you can sort of upgrade by installing uh, additional plugins and make it more advanced. But if you don't need this upgrade, so then you can use just a you can just use it as a text editor. Yeah. Um, Nikolai asks, uh, says, Sergey, thanks for the nice talk. Do you think computer vision can interpret the object to your PhenoScript? Uh, uh, like, uh, Nikolai, could you please specify maybe how to interpret? Uh, I mean, how I see that, like if we have a Fenos, like something written in Fenoscript and we have say a picture, right? Of 3D model and then computer vision somehow mm -hmm. says, uh -huh, this is uh, what you, you write in Fenoscript. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, highlights uh, this body part or I this mean, character. I mean, on the, uh, 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 let's imagine that computer is a person and uh, using the computer vision, could it uh, interpret uh, and uh, rewrite it in the in that language? R uh, generate the text like ChatGPT, for example. I'm ChatGPT. I'm seeing something, and I can describe it in this language. Yeah, that would be cool to see that. Uh, I, <laughs> right now, just no. To replace, but... Just to replace routine work. But uh, I've been playing recently, actually, uh, of, by, of, of about linking, uh, you know, image data with Fenoscript description. So right now, for uh, you can easily segment your images using uh, SAM model, segment anything from Facebook. It literally takes like five minutes maybe to segment entire specimens in all small body parts. And then you can link it link it with Fenoscript. And this opens up a lot of like future possibilities, right? To compare different body parts using existing AI methods or you know, these also, these data can serve for, in future for training new models. So. Uh, kind of, I, I would envision actually linking quick segmentation and linking 
uh, segmenting data with phenol with basically with ontological annotations to uh, to to search to make them fair and basically searchable and queryable the images. Mm -hmm. We're just about at time. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Nikolai. Jen Hammock and chat uh, made a note about um, the success of ChatGPT, and I think I'm I'm almost certain one of our unconferences will have some time for brainstorming. Uh, I lo a lot of these ideas that are being referenced here in parallel, um, Nikolai's ideas and stuff are are really resonating with us in terms of things that we might dive into in the future. 